Yeah, it's a good way for like opening yeah, the inner body. And then adjusting, matching. All right, and it's time for my back bend sequence. All right, sitting yeah. and notching. Also, when I do my self practice, sometimes I would go back to a certain element, yeah, either for recovery, yeah, or for example, if I perform my astrasana. And I feel like I miss the uh, yeah, inner pockets inside. I will try and repeat it for a few more times. Uh, walking my knees. All right, and up. And then marching, up and down. Yeah, like your hips dance. Can even circle around. <laughs> I'm doing many breathing techniques when I do my self practice, like the many combinations of the pranayama. Yeah. But I suit it to adapt yeah, how I feel inside the body. Yeah. Preferring, you can just do yeah, like the crescent lunge. But, uh, I'll try to do a uh, hand to floor. Ekapada Raja Kaputasana or Ekapada Kapotasana. Like my way of preparing for my deep back bends. I find this. Yeah, posture, yeah, the single leg kaputasana, actually lighter than the full kaputasana, maybe because I'm using yeah, the lever coming from that open leg to assist me. But this requires really deep strength of the core, because you're just depending on one leg to support you. All right. And I will lift and come back up. Yeah. The first try is always yeah, the bad try. Yeah. It's not always perfect when you do a self practice. Our bodies are different. Yeah. You're light today, the following day, you're heavy. Even <laughs> the following hour, you're going to feel really heavy and stop. When yeah. walking, yeah, I feel like my left side is a bit tight inside. Not really tight, but like lines and spaces I, leave, I need to gain access. Okay. Yeah, I'll try a couple of now. Every time you attempt to do a curl back, you know, move away from the stretch, inhale. And exhale, fold to the back, inhale. And exhale, fold to the back. Yep. I'll try to assess well, where am I? Yep. Okay. Loosen, come up. Gain access to those inner hips. All right, I'm ready. All right, it's too far. Come forward, uh, walk the knees. Yes, yeah, more stable, more open. And I can already reach. The first one, I would use my toes, yeah, to create space. All right, and relax them. All right, rubbing the elbows to the midline. You can lightly turn the head. Yeah. So you can open the shoulder and easy down the floor. 
even at this age of my practice. Oh, the Kaputasana is really one of the most challenging, if not the most challenging asana for me. And I do it almost every day, actually, daily. Walking the knees. Yes. Yeah, you might have, yeah, um, informed you. I might inform you in the past that I have really deep yeah, uh, thoracic curvature, yeah, and the scoliosis. And the back bend, I need to really gain access to those you know, wavy lines inside my spine. Therefore, I uh, curl and I do a spiraling action as my practice, as I practice my back bend. Sitting back. All right, hands. Breathing in, in here. I feel like, yeah, the side of me is yeah, quite loose. And then when that side of the body is loose, the, jo the joints tend to <laughs> slip out of their sockets. Therefore, I need to readjust them. All right. The other leg. This is my flexible side, but it doesn't mean that if it's flexible, it's lighter. Actually, during deep asana, the flexible th side tends to become <laughs> the more problematic side because you're so loose, there's a huge tendency for your joints yeah, to slip out of the sockets or their connection. Therefore, you have to be more careful. Yes. Oh, feels good, this one. Nice and open in the spine. And even the shoulder, sometimes I have to hug it or rub it. And up. Good. So that's my first round of the back bend sequence. Yeah. When I do my back bend, once I finish that initial stage, the rest becomes slight. <laughs> and up. Because personally, I really started so bad at back bending. I can't even do an instruction. I am more of a flexing person because of my nature, because of my physical structure, and maybe because of my yeah, spiritual nature too. I'm more of that inward, yeah, introverted personality. And then opening the chest, yeah, that's one thing that's really very, well, challenging for me. Yeah, both physically, maybe mentally and spiritually and emotionally too. Yeah? And folding back. Oh, this one is lighter. But still. Yeah. No, not easy, actually. It's lighter, but it's still challenging. Sometimes I'll hang here. You don't have to rush, hang loose, breathe, come up and sway. Yeah, my left knee runs away, so I will <laughs> discipline it so it, go, it remains in the midline. All right, like that. Mm. 
Hug into midlight. Oh, my left brain is so open. I could hear the nada already. And that's what I mean when I say I'm using my asana to gain access to the energetic anatomy and adjust the body. All right, that's what I'm chasing for. All right, feels good. Ooh, nice and deep, yeah. Walking, inching. <laughs> it's never easy. <laughs> it never gets easy. The like for doesn't that really. Yeah. And then forward. Yeah, sometimes I'll flow, but the flow is just for me to work around yeah, spaces I might, I might have missed performing the asana. Okay, I feel like doing one more per side and another one or two kapotasanas. Hugging the midline. Loosen. Hang. Mm, feels good. Every time I do my back bend, I feel like my whole body inside opens. is actually something that really helps me manage my imbalances, the openness in the way I breathe, and even it changes my mood, my mental situation. Come up, yeah, adjusting. Loosen a bit that inner thigh. Beautiful. And up. Walking. Inching. Yeah. And rubbing around the joints. Yeah. Kapatasana. Come up a bit. Yeah, gain access. Shoulders, neck, mouth, tongue. Breathe. This position, Kapatasana, was <laughs> way too advanced for me when I was studying. I didn't even think yeah, it was going to happen to me. But you know, when the body is open, the energy will naturally lead to this, to opening your spine. And I've never heard myself doing deep backbends. Really, <laughs> it's interesting. I would um, maybe hurt my joints walking or running or doing my weight training but never in my back bends, never in my asana. All right. <laughs> Sometimes just doing your household chores <laughs> hurts you. Yeah. 
but the practice, because they're mindful, you're using the breath, yeah, it's safe, even those deep ones. But of course, this will require plenty of years of preparation. All right. Lastly, this side. Gripping to the midline, and that will stabilize your hips. You can walk that foot to the middle. Uh, pressing into the outer edges of the knee to prevent your tail from scooping to further under. All right, that's enough. Come up. I'll try to open the space a little bit more. Yeah. Rubbing from the inner knee to the front of the knee and around that outer edge. Well done. Wow, the steep. Ooh, really deep down the hip flexors. And walking those things, marching up and down. And last kapotasana. <laughs> sharing with you a personal practice of mine. Not the lightest today, but there's the essence of self-practice. Keep going. Keep practicing. Don't lose it. Don't rush, even if you've been in a certain position for countless of times, approach it as if it's your first time. And care with care, utmost attention to the breath, and then safety is a very more uh, invaluable tool for our long lasting self practice. Because no one is guiding you at home, right? So you are your teacher. No judging. Yeah, if you can't do it for that particular session, try again. There we go. Well done, me. <laughs> and walk him, adjusting, and move him. Good. That's my back practice. Yeah. Jump it back. Try. 